Pete Zielinski, Modern Machine Shop. This video series is the one person shop. We are talking about all the different ways, um, techniques, products, strategies, that a very small shop can be very competitive, very effective. We are at Dan's Custom Machining, Williamsburg, Ohio, and the owner of Dan's Custom Machining, Dan Donaworth. Thank, Dan, thank you for having us back. No problem, Pete, thanks for coming out. What we're gonna talk about with this episode is the cost that goes into a job shop, even a small job shop. Um, you've probably never thought about this before, but it actually costs quite a bit to keep this place running. Um, one of those costs is tool inventory. How much expense do you have wrapped up in cutting tools right now, tools that are in the shop right now, would you guess? And, and another guess, how many varieties of different cutters do you have on hand? Uh, I'd say if you added up our cutting tool inventory for end mills and inserts for turning, uh, we'd probably keep anywhere from fifteen dollars to $17,000 on hand in the shop of different varieties. Out of that, we, we probably keep in stock probably over a hundred different variety of end mills from sizes as small as 20 thou all the way up to three quarter inch end mill. And you need that inventory. You need it available and on hand. Why? Why is that so important? The biggest reason we need it available and on hand is for us being a job shop, everyone needs their parts and they need it now. For us being able to offer two week, three week turn time is very important. And even in instances of what's changing in manufacturing where say tools are made elsewhere and need to come here when that, if they can't get the tools here because of some worldwide event, uh, we already have it on hand. We can still keep going with what's here and we keep extras. Is there a, a situation, an anecdote that comes to mind when you did not have a tool that you really needed? Can you tell that story? When I was machining a part, uh, I thought I had everything ordered. Uh, Went to go start the part, part was due the Monday. We were going into a Friday. The part was due that next coming Monday. Didn't have the long reach in mill that I needed to reach down in there and I ended up having to improvise. I, I did work, work around to get through it, but life was not fun for that weekend trying to get the job done. And it was just one more tool that now we keep in stock and have for those odd reach positions. You described the large quantity, the large variety of tools you have on hand. How do you know what tools to keep? What kind of thinking went into determining what tools you need to have on hand? Pretty much, uh, we have a, our cam library is all up to date and accurate with all the tools that we have in our drawer over at the machine. And each drawer at the machine has a label on it, which tells you what end mill it is. We try to keep four of everything in stock in our drawer, three of the stuff that's not as common. And pretty much once we relate an establishment with a customer and we know the style of parts that they do, any tool that they would ever need or use, we keep in stock. Any tool they might need, you keep in stock. You keep three or four of, of different tooling items a piece on hand. What is your system? How do you keep all of that inventory stocked? When you use tools, like what does is, what is reordering look like? Um, what does your system look like for maintaining that inventory? Uh, the way I go through it is once a week I try to sit down and order tools that I would need to reorder. When I take an end mill out, if it's down to the reorder amount, which I will take that empty cartridge and I'll put it on my desk. And that's how at the end of the week I know to reorder that tool. And at the beginning of every week I go through and make sure I didn't miss everything and count the drawers. Do you have one tooling supplier or a variety? Uh, typically on the mills we have uh, one tooling supplier that we use. It just makes it easier for us to keep track and it's a Emco being a local company, we can have tools usually next day if they're in stock from Toledo. So we, we, we pick our tooling vendors based on accessibility and service and support. And as far as inserts go, we do use a little bit of variety as far as insert cutters. Related question, we've been talking about tooling in terms of the actual cutters themselves. Um, using those end mills effectively also involves a tool holder investment. Um, how do you use hydraulic tool holders? Uh, we use hydraulic tool holders for uh, all our accurate uh, runout holding of 
micro end mills, 20 thou end mills that are reaching 300 thou deep or any of our small tooling up. We use it for our large tool holding too for three quarter inch end mills just to prevent the most accurate run out that we can to do adaptive tool pass and really hammer at the material and remove it as fast as possible. So we like to utilize hydraulic tool holding and heat shrink. Thoughts about cutting tools, about maintaining a job shop's cutting tool inventory? Check out more videos in this series, our, our video series on the one-person shop. Dan, thank you again for having us. No problem.